I'm in my home city of Chester, DJI Mini 4 Pro, and this new mega limited edition 16 pack ND filters from Freewell. In the past, I bought the all day pack from Freewell for my Mini 3 Pro, and you can see how scratched up this pack is. I did use it a lot, and I paid for this with my own money. Now, Freewell have taken pity on me with my low subscriber count. They did send me this pack. I don't think they've watched my recent videos, though, because they're probably regretting now sending me this. I am going to have a section in today's video where I'm going to say, okay, Freewell marketing guys, I want you guys to just hide behind the sofa. If you notice here, there's a, there's a gap here where you can put the, there's actually two empty spaces. So you can put your normal case that goes around the camera on the Mini 4 Pro here, and this still closes. On my previous case, the Mini 3 Pro, I couldn't do that. It's quite handy with these propeller protectors from DJI that it's got a flat surface here. So if you're putting it on a tripod, it's very easy. All you need is a bit of electrical tape. Load this up centrally so we get it down on the path. I'll look this way. Oh, look at that. It does look beautiful with the mist filter on, but let's take it off, see the difference. That's with the filter off. Flying in the mist, guys, it's risky with your drone. I mean, it can take some beautiful shots, so it's, it's a real shame, but you do have to be incredibly careful. I recommend keeping your flights very, very short. Keep it in cine mode and just don't do anything too crazy. It, it's frustrating and that might be an argument for getting the mist filter. If you want to capture those dreamy shots, you can do it when there isn't mist and have that kind of effect. As you guys that follow me will know, I've been getting into blue hour filming quite a lot and this is meant to give it a more of a blooming effect. So it'd be fascinating to see what effects I can get. I did try it before doing some sunset shots. You know, when the drone's flying, it's hard to be accurate to go from filters no filter but I tried the best I could get a quick shot took it down and took the filter off but I'm going to do it now on the tripod and then I can be very quick going from one to without okay so this is without any ND filter on at all and then I'm going to put the mist filter on see if we get a bit of a mist more of a mist effect with those lights yeah I can see already on the screen there's quite a big difference actually it's quite a nice effect Let's do our final test shot. So this is without the S Mist 1 filter on. And then let's quickly move it on. So just pay attention to the light there. And as you, as you can see, there's quite a nice blooming effect there on the light. I can imagine this would look really nice at Christmas, actually, just getting that kind of dreamier look. The only thing is, once you take the shot with the filter on, there's no really going back afterwards and changing things. And like I was saying in my night shooting video, you've got a very short window, unfortunately, with blue hour. So it's going to be very difficult to get a shot, bring your drone down, take the filter off. I think you're really going to have to think about the shot before you do it. Do you want that blooming effect or not? I, I like mist filters. I use it on my A7S III camera all the time. Now, in my first two reviews of the Mini 4 Pro, I didn't have ND filters. So you might have noticed in a couple of my shots, they look slightly, almost like a video game, slightly unnatural, almost too quick. When you've got your ND filters on, you can have your shutter speed to be double the frame rate. So that then creates a little bit of motion blur. Now when your drone's up high enough, you're not gonna notice that. But for these low shots, so at the very least, I would recommend getting an ND32 or 64. If you live in a hot country with bright sun, probably go for the 64. If you live in England, maybe 32, maybe even a 16 in the weather at the moment. First shot we'll do is we're gonna show you without any NDs on at all. So we've got, one over 400. So you may notice in this shot, it's a little bit, it looks almost a little bit like a video game. It's not too bad. And my first drone review, I was probably going at even quicker shutter speed. And then you really do notice the almost mechanical look to the way the drone moves. Put the ND filter on in a second and show you a demonstration with the correct shutter speed. So you should notice with this shot, it looks a little bit more natural the way the drone's moving. Just more as your eye sees it. So this is normal ND filter. That looks really nice, doesn't it, actually? Look at that. 
I'm just going to leave it run with the boat because I don't want to spoil the shot. Look at that. Wow. It's crazy weather today, absolutely crazy. It's funny, when you go out with a tripod, I'm finding I'm getting loads of like camera clubs coming up to chat to me. Because today's been such a mix of different weathers we've had all season, so I'm not trying to replicate the same shot I did exactly this morning because this is a bit of a walkway now, so it's a bit too busy. So I'm just going to go low, and then you can see the reflections better that way anyway. This is normal ND. See, I actually think that shot looks fine as it is. But with the polarising filter, in some situations, you might want to control the reflections. So we've got the, the dial set at H at the moment, and you should, as you can see, the, the reflections are quite a lot darker now. But what we can do is we can, we'll move it halfway now, halfway between H and V. I've been noticing that the H is often too dark. This looks good to me. Then we'll move it across all the way to V, which is more or less the same as with, with a normal, with, without having an, the, the polarising filter. In 10 minutes, the Pocket 3 is about to get announced and I'm going to look for a fair and objective review. A bit of maturity I want, you know. Let's see what we can find. We'll go for the one with the most views because surely that'll be the, ma the mature and objective review, eh? A guy called Potato Jet. Light pollution filters. I'm quite excited about these, actually. There's a little bit of a bluish tint I can see. Each video will start without the light pollution filter and then add it on so we'll go to multiple spots so i'm expecting maybe a little bit of a bluish tint to this maybe it takes out some of the tungsten a little bit i do prefer a slightly bluish look to, to my night scenes anyway will this affect the contrast that's going to be really interesting so this might be the filter that i wasn't expecting to be interested in but having researched what they're about and what i've been filming recently which is more night scenes this might be a real gem of a filter that maybe i use this other than the i will use the nd filters a lot but maybe this is the one that i keep going to keep going to anyway i'm excited to test this it's getting nearish blue hour so let's get to get to the first spot and then we'll we'll see what we come up with so we have a white balance locked in so this is without any nd filter at all let's add in the light pollution filter that's actually quite nice. It seems a bit darker then when I added the filter on. I suppose that's the, what, what it's designed to do is to improve the contrast on your night shots. That to me looks a pretty good shot actually. This is a relatively large set for ND filters. Now if you're going around with your main camera bag it's not a problem you can easily fit it in your case but if you ever just want to go out with your little DJI man bag sometimes I want to just go out you know Maybe there's a bumble date on the horizon. You know, you can go out. It might be slightly embarrassing having a man bag, but you can turn up. In the very unlikely event that the young lady bails on you, you can still get some drone shots. But you're not gonna be able to fit this pack. So you can either decide which ND you want on your drone already, or I've got a little suggestion for Freewell. Give us like a hybrid case. Okay, so like you've got your SD case here. You've got space for a few SD cards, maybe four, five, six SD cards, and then space for four filters. So you don't have to take the whole pack with you. You can decide, right, I'm going out at this time. I want to take a few. And then this by itself would fit in the rubbish little bag from DJI. Now, this is the moment where I want to just tell the Freewell marketing guys, just go and sit behind the sofa. Just hide, cover your ears up. There's a YouTuber, he's probably my favorite drone YouTuber actually, a guy called Ted Nemeth, because he's so different to everyone out there. He's very much a free spirit. And my friend Dave, who you might have seen on my videos, comes out on me quite a lot on my drone. Well, he, he did, and then he had a break where he didn't. But he was telling me that he's been getting really sick of just seeing on his feed firmware update videos technical videos and, and the, the bold text you must watch this so dave mate how are you dealing with the drone geek anxiety it's been hard to be honest yeah that's yeah, yellow text mate just see it there it's just see it in your sleep sometimes yellow, yeah just just take a break you know just remember you don't always have to use nd filters you know yeah. and i don't judge you for just carrying this little man bag no. it doesn't diminish your masculinity at all okay. in my eyes but i appreciate that I yeah i appreciate that if you reach a point where the technical guys with the firmware update videos, talking too much about filters. If they're starting to do your head in, if they're giving you nightmares. Must watch, is it safe? 
Drone nerds can be nasty creatures. I was bitten once by one. Still have a scar. Don't let that happen, guys. Go and watch a Ted Namath video. Go out with your drone. Just go out and have fun. Marketing guy, come out behind the sofa now. It's safe. As I was saying, guys, you should all buy the Freewell pack. No matter your financial position, just go and buy it. If you have to sell your main camera, go and buy this pack. No, seriously then, jokes aside, the quality of the glass in this pack is amazing and that is a big reason to go ahead. If you are going to get any filter, even if you're just buying one, I would go with Freewell. They give you more than the, just the DJI set that you get with there. And in the past I've brought generic brands and you're spending a lot on your drone and you're then putting very cheap glass in front of it. So Freewell know what they're doing, they don't play around. They give good instructions as well with the pack, that's important, you get QR codes, you can scan, clear, simple, quick instructions how to use your filters. I do really like these, but you have to figure out where are you on the scale. Are you a drone nerd or are you someone that wants the freedom? Maybe you're somewhere in the middle. And I think you've got the all day pack, haven't you Dave? Freewell that you got for the Mini 3 Pro. I'd say that's kind of intermediate. And then if you want the beginner, then just get one ND filter. The essential, what you need. Remember that the first two reviews that I did with the Jam Mini 4 Pro, no ND filters at all. When your drone's up high enough, you just don't need it. So I think they're important for getting those motion blur shots. Yeah. But, but as much as we get hammered on YouTube, ND filters, ND filters, I don't quite believe that as much as I used to. Do you know what I mean? Because we do get that message over and over and over again. Yeah, and a bit like that yellow text. <laughs> He's not giving up on the yellow text. He's having a nightmare, eh? So. Yeah, it, I, th I like ND filters, but I think it's important to know what they're for. And having played around with these sets, I do like the mist filter, by the way. I've been looking, I haven't showed you the shots yet, but it, for certain shots, that is nice. UV filter, it's not so important. LPR, I'd like to do a whole day like when we went to Liverpool. I mean, I did a shoot the other day with some very high level drone pilots, and they were FPV guys. And they turned up with a whole crate of gear. So I do think that having all the gear, sometimes it can help you. But then sometimes just going around with this and just having a basic setup, this is going to fit in your bag better than this is. There's a lot to be said for that. Whereas... Well, I would suggest to Freewell, if you don't do it already, have a customizable package, the essential what you actually want, rather than something you're not potentially going to need. Anyway, mate, you, you will get over your drone geek trauma. Just time, you know? Bumble, eh? They always ask you, don't they? How's your day? What are you up to? I've been testing out polarized ND filters. Blocked. It's important to remember with Bumble guys is here it looks like I'm about to film some alligators. At best, there's, there's a duck in the corner over there. But you can always take a screen grab off Google. What are you up to? Take this shot, find an image on Google of some alligators. It's a lot better than testing out polarised ND filters, isn't it? I'm a bit nervous to do this, but I'm going to watch the Brandon Lee review the Pocket 3. I'm nervous because he's very, very good, and I think I'll probably end up buying it. Damn you, Brandon. Some editor's notes to close out the video. This is on the Pocket 3 using the new mics as well. Something I haven't really done justice to on this video is the long exposure for photography filters we've got. Now, let me know, would you guys want me to make a specific video about photography with the DJI Mini 4 Pro? I have got a drone filmmaking channel, but I've been meeting quite a lot of photographers and I think this is a hybrid set. I haven't really also spoken so far about the value of this pack. You know, it's $149.99. It's quite a big saving. After I recorded that scene with Dave, he asked me how much the pack cost and I told him and he was, you know, wow, for the amount of filters you get, that is pretty good value. And it's also, you know, it's limited edition. So I'm sure you will be able to buy them in future individually. Will you get them at this price? I'm not sure. And Dave's idea about a custom pack, I really like that. You know, I would like a filmmaking set, a hybrid set, a photography set, but the cost of customizing might put the price up. So if you want to grab this at the, the price it is now, at least you know where you stand with it. I haven't really done justice to the CPL filters, I think, in the tests I've done so far. And I don't plan to use these regularly, but I think I'll have them in the bag for that one shot. You know, you get to the top of a mountain, you're looking down on a lake and the reflections are a little bit too strong. I'm not sure I'd buy them individually, but when they're in the pack anyway, I think that the CPL filters could be very, very useful. Quick side note as well about this 
idea I had with the case. Now this does close the Oracle case. You can take it out like this, but the filters aren't secure. So my, just my idea was to, if Freewell wants to make it or any other company, they're locked in. So if you want to go out with SD cards plus your ND filters, customize, make them for the shape of the ND filters. I think that would be incredible. Whether it'll happen, I'm not sure, but I would personally love this. Just when you're going out with your little DJI bag, it would give you the option to do that. And then when you want to go out with the camera bag, you can go out with the full whack. It's just good to have the options, that's my opinion. Quick note about the S mist filter. I found out this is actually stands for snow mists, one quarter. Now, when I looked in studio, I found the first shot to be a little bit too strong a blooming effect. But the second shot I thought looked good, so I think it just depends how far you are away from the light source. They've obviously designed this with Christmas in mind, you know, getting Christmas lights and that sort of thing. It's one of my favorite filters, actually, this alongside the LPR filter. I really like these. And of course, the, the classic ND filters, you know, you can't go wrong with those. I don't mind being interrupted by the bell sound. It's, it's kind of nice to add something to the end of my videos. <laughs> I'm gonna close out this video by several points in this, make creating this video, I've been annoyed by families and kids spoiling my audio. <sighs> they say that drones are annoying. Kids are not good for audio levels. I think if I have the mic really close, you probably won't hear the kids too much. So let's record this. At the moment, I've got just the normal ND filter on. What's slightly annoying, my first minor little grumble, is they don't give you an ND8. So this is ND16, so to stick to the 180, to stick to the shutter speed rule of... <sighs> There's some really annoying families going around this evening. Just really annoying. You know, you've got some people and you're not in the mood and you just, just leave me alone. They've got some pellet gun or something. They look like grown... Look, what are they doing? Honestly. So we're getting quite dark now just to give you a different lighting effect. Um, possibly, yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I saw this spot and I was, I was tempted to start the review here. <laughs> the Freewell limited edition mega pack on my throne. <sighs> Would have been a bit ridiculous, wouldn't it?